this time together today. We thank you, Lord, for Pastor Shravan's ministry. We thank you for the work that uh, you are doing through him in India and his brother. And uh, we thank you, Father God, that every need is met according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. We thank you for this time together today to seek your face, to hear your word, to apply your word, to receive revelation knowledge, instruction from on high. And we thank you for our victory, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Look with me, if you would, to Mark, the 11th chapter. Hallelujah. Not an uncommon scripture here. Mark, the 11th chapter, verse 24. Praise the Lord. And Mark eleven twenty four reads, Therefore I say unto you, Jesus is speaking, of course, What things soever ye desire, when ye pray... Believe that ye receive them, and you shall have them. That's Mark eleven twenty four. All right, so the Lord here is telling us how to receive answers to our prayers, how to walk in victory. Hallelujah. He says here, What things soever we desire, when we pray, at the time of prayer, Believe that you receive them. When do I believe? At the time of prayer. Right? And you shall have them. Praise the Lord. All right. So we're talking here today. I want to speak to you about how to receive when you believe. Hallelujah. We talked a lot about believing in this church for the last seven years. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But today I want to talk about how to receive when you believe. Is that okay? Yes. Hallelujah. I reckon we ought to define receive then. Uh, the Blue Letter Bibles with Strong's Concordance. That word is lambano in the Greek and it means to take. The word receive means to take. Now if you have a problem with that from the uh, Greek concordance um, the dictionary.com if you look it up online says the same thing it says the definition of receive is to take into one's possession so strong says to take dictionary.com says to take and expounds it further saying into one's possession so here's the goal when we pray and believe we receive then we must take it at the time of prayer okay and then we'll have it praise the Lord there's four steps here not that we want uh, legalistic uh, rules and regulations but there's four four step process mentioned in this scripture verse the first one is to pray second one is to believe third one is to receive and the fourth one is to have it. Hallelujah. Do you get that? Look back in verse 24. Jesus said, when you desire, whatever you desire, there's no limit here. When you pray, believe that you receive and you shall have them. The only one future in this is you shall have them. The rest of it is present tense. Okay? So, I pray, I believe, I receive, and then I get. Hallelujah. Are you with me? If you jumble up the order of this, you're going to get in trouble. It won't work for you. Primarily, you've got to believe and you've got to receive simultaneously. Today, although we've spoken a lot on believing... We're not going to delve into that, but I do need to bring up one thing, and that is when you say you're believing or that you've believed, you must ask yourself the question, what are you believing? Are you believing that God is able? Sounds good. It's a start, but does that mean you're still waiting for it? If you're waiting for it, you haven't received it. You haven't taken it. Are you with me? 
Are you believing that God is going to do it for you? Well, most Christians get into that mode. And what happens is they believe that they receive it when they see it. It doesn't say that. Hallelujah. Are you believing that healing, God is healing you? It's coming. Money is coming. Rent is coming. Rent payment is coming. Uh, needs are, are going to be met. All that's future. Now, stay with me. Mark eleven twenty four says, Pray, believe, take it. All right? Once I take it in here, then I'll see it out here. Okay? It, it can be confusing because um, the, there is a future here of, of you shall have it physically. However, you got to get it spiritually first before you'll have it physically. That's the receive part of it. So you've got to be sure that when you say you believe, that you're believing properly, not that you're believing a future event. You must lay hold of it now in your spirit. Possess it now. Lay claim to it. It's mine this moment. I'm not waiting on it. I'm not expecting to see it. I have it. Period. Are you okay with that? So, I believe that I possess it now. How, how can this be? Well, I must believe that Jesus did it for me already. That's the, the basis of it, is that Jesus Christ already has done it for me. I'm not waiting on him to do it again. It's already done. And now I'm taking it what is already done. All right? Can, can you see that? I'm trying to go a little slow here. I, I receive it as mine now. I possess it now, and then I shall physically have it show up. All right? I, I don't mean to confuse you, but um, if you don't lay hold of this, then what you'll be doing is when you pray, you, you wait till you see it before you start saying you have it. And in God's grace and mercy, that sometimes happens, but if you want it, to happen every time, victorious every day, then you have to learn to do it God's way every time. Hallelujah. Today we're talking on how to receive. Look in Luke 8. Luke 8. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter 8. And we're not, for time's sake, we're not going to go through the whole parable here or the teaching, but we're going to go through uh, just the explanation in verse 13 of one particular uh, point of it here. Verse 13 says, They on the rock are they which when they hear... How does faith come? When they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. Some translations... Translate that temptation there as testing. Um, not so much a temptation to, uh, you know, sin or do something wrong, although unbelief is sin. But a testing, meaning the pressure, the pressures of life come on you. And uh, these people mentioned here, they hear the word, they receive the word, with joy. In other words, they agree with it. Yeah, praise God. I like that. Sounds good. I want it. It's nice. Amen, brother. Preach it. Whatever terminology you use. But when trials come or pressure against that comes, there's no root there and they they lose it. They give up. 
These people are what I call sensual believers. They're governed by their senses. If their senses tell them they're well, then they say they're well. They believe they're well. Until their senses next time tells them they're getting sick again. <laughs> Hallelujah. If their senses tell them that they have enough money to do whatever they need to do, then that's what they govern their actions by and uh, they do it accordingly. Hallelujah. But God has taken us to a higher level here of walking by the word of God in that when God makes a promise, it's not conditional upon what I'm seeing or feeling or tasting or touching or hearing. It's only conditional upon my belief in it and my receiving it. Praise the Lord. Well, here these people here in verse 13, they heard, they liked what they heard. They received the word with joy, which sounds to be a good thing. But unfortunately, it wasn't enough because when pressure came against that word, they lost it. They gave up. They fell away. So, so what was happening here? Well, these people couldn't get past what their eyes or ears or their feelings were dictating to them. They loved the word. They agreed with it. They agreed with its truth. To us, that seems to be the right thing. It seems very religious, very Christian. But it's not all that it takes. These people agreed with it. They loved it. They acknowledged it. But they couldn't get it to work in their life. Kenyon calls it mental assent. That's a good term for it. In other words, mentally agreeing, but no heartfelt knowledge of knowing that I have it. Look in Acts 19. We, we see an example of this. Acts 19. Hallelujah. Now this is uh, about the Holy Ghost, but we're not talking about the Holy Ghost this morning. I'm talking about the principle of believing and receiving. Another time we'll talk on the Holy Ghost. Acts 19 verse 1 says, It came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. And finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? Well, let's just loosely paraphrase this. Have ye received since ye believed? There it is. Paul said, have you received since you believe? Jesus said, when you pray, believe that you do receive. Then you have it. Okay? Now these uh, people here in Ephesus, they had some misunderstanding. Now Paul delves into that. Just like some people today don't receive because they have misunderstanding. So he explains to them and digs it out as to why and what. He says uh, in verse 2 again, he said to them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said to him, Well, we don't even have not as much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Under what then were you baptized? And they said, Under John's baptism, the only one we knew. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, there became an action because they believed and received according to proper knowledge. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied, and the men were about twelve. Hallelujah. You haven't heard of it, there's no faith for it. So Paul inquires, he gets to the root of it. Then they recede by acting in faith, taking it. They had it. Look in John. St. John chapter 1. Praise the Lord. 
You guys awake out there? John chapter 1, verse 12. John 1, 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Verse 13 says, Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Now listen, because I'm going somewhere with this. Hallelujah. Verse 12 says, As many as... That would include whoever will, right? As many as received him. The word there, received him, took him, possessed him. All right? To them, to these select group, he gave them power. Say power. Power! To become the sons of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's quite an honor and a privilege, wouldn't you say? That makes you out of the realm of the natural into the supernatural. If you're a son of God. Would you agree with that? It says, even to them that believe on his name. All right? His name is above every name. Would you agree? His name is... It's everything. You know, and it, there's a lot in a name. Uh, various people have uh, names, but more commonly, products. Why do you buy um, one particular brand name over another product? Because of the name. Why do you pay more for one instead of the Publix brand or the Albertsons brand? Because of the name. Well, it says, even to those of us who believe on his name, meaning the value of this name, Jesus, that we understand what's behind it, the quality of it. And to those people, verse 13 says, which were born, look at this now, this is important, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Now, that's a real key. Hallelujah. Because this is receiving that God's will be birthed in you. Listen to what I'm saying now. It says here, to as many as received him, took him, him meaning Jesus, Jesus and the word are one, so all the promises... The, the, the word of God from Genesis to Revelation to those who received it, took it, to those people have power. Power to become the sons of God. Supernatural race. Even to those that believe on the basis of his name, of his victory, his outstandingness. Hallelujah. Now these people were born. Listen now. These people that received him, that received this word, these people were born. Listen to me. Not by man, not by the will of man, not by our decisions of uh, uh, thinking we're smart enough to do it this way or that way, but these people are born of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What I'm saying is, when I see God's Word, when I hear God's Word, and God's Word makes a promise to me, I receive that promise, I take it as mine, so much so that I embrace it and possess it more than circumstantial evidence, so that I'm having it born, the Word of God born in me, in this area, I now have power. Hallelujah. Power as the Son of God. Power over circumstances. Power over situations. Power over lack. Power over sickness. Power over disease. Hallelujah! Well, look in 1 John. That was big John. Look in 1 John. 
Are you with me? 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Talking about being born of God. It says, verse 4, Whatsoever is born of God. Look at this now. Link that to John 1, 12, and 13. That not born of the will of man or uh, the smarts of man, the wisdom of man, the uh, ideas of man, but in fact, born by revelation from God, having received His Word as ultimate Lord, authority over everything, born from that, hallelujah. These people, verse 4 says, verse 5 says, Hallelujah. Chapter 5, verse 4. I'll get it in a minute. Who whatsoever is born of God, I confused you real good, didn't I? Overcomes the world. Do you see that? What is the world but your life, your circumstances, your events? Hallelujah. For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes this world, even our faith. Do you see that? Because I heard, I prayed, I believed, I received, I possessed it at that moment, and that changes what I'm physically involved with. The world, right? The world. Glory to God. Are you there? Mm, hallelujah. If we take the will of God and lay hold of it now, possess it now, take it now, confess it as mine now, no matter what is happening in this natural, glory to God. Look in Romans 4. Romans 4. Beginning with verse 16. Therefore it is of faith... That it might be by grace. That goes back to the fact again that Jesus has done it all. I just receive it by faith. The grace is the fact that it's already accomplished. It's done. It's finished. It's over. Your provision is there. Your divine health is there. Your victory is there. Hallelujah. And the way you tap into it, the way you receive it, the way you take it, is faith. Verse 16, it is of faith that it might be by grace. Now that's the difficult part. It's not difficult for us to acknowledge that he's done it all. It's difficult for us to take it as ours. Because all hell screams against you in every way that, you know, it's not happening. Hallelujah. Glory to God. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, everyone. Not that which is of the law, but to that also which is of faith, of Abraham, who's the father of us all. Verse 17, as it's written, I've made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed. Past tense. Even God, who quicks the, quickens the dead, makes alive the dead, and calls those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken. What Pastor talked about this morning, so shall thy seed be. Look at this, being not weak in faith. He didn't consider his own body, circumstances, feelings, sensual. Now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded what he had promised, he was able to perform. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fully persuaded. You must be fully persuaded that it's yours. Glory to God. You know, you'll really know what you believe and what you received by what comes out of your mouth. And not only that, but the actions that go along with it. What are you saying and what are you doing? 
We don't have time, but James 2, verses 14 through 26, you can jot it down and read it later today, talks about faith without works is dead. Hallelujah. To be fully persuaded means you're convinced that you have it so that your mouth confirms it and your actions align with it. There is no fear and no question as to why haven't you done it, God. Right? Why, why, I've been doing this, this, and this. Why isn't it there, God? Well, it is there. It's mine. It's now. Let me show you an example of this in Luke 17 in closing. Luke 17. Praise the Lord. Luke 17, verse 11 says, came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. Lepers couldn't come into the crowd. They, were, they had to st stand so many paces away. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. Now Leviticus 14 talks about the ritual you have to go through. When you're cleansed from leprosy, then you have to go to the priest, and he makes certain uh, offering for you. And it came to pass that as they went... They were cleansed. Hallelujah. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. He was an outsider. And Jesus answered, said, Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go your way. Your faith hath made you whole. There was only one Jesus said that to. That your faith... And what, what is the difference here in these lepers? Well, when you understand that they had to go show to the priest in order for the completion of it, then they headed that way. They were going to show the priest the completion of it. But one, when seeing that he had received it, turned around shouting the glory. Hallelujah. The other nine were saying, well, I got to go. I got to do this. I got to do that. It's not yet really done. I hope it works and all this other stuff. But one said, I've got it and I'm going to go thank him and praise him now. Hallelujah. Because he received it, he took it now. Hallelujah. And that's the difference in somebody that receives and somebody that's still hoping it's going to happen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you so much for your word. Thank you, Lord God, for the encouragement today. Thank you for the encouragement through Pastor Chavran.